Hello YouTube, it's Dust Gregor, and welcome back to another First Impressions on another Linux distribution. This week I am looking at the Indonesian Debian-based distro called Blancon. Now, more than a First Impressions about this video, this is a huge word of warning to everyone out there. This distro install screwed up my test laptop. Now first let me tell you, my laptop has two hard drives, SDA, SDV. The first hard drive is the original hard drive that came with the system about four years ago, 500 gig, still has Windows 7 Professional on there. I've always kept that clean always kept it there mainly because if you're an avid Linux user you know that there's still always that one program that just will not work in Linux a good example I have mentioned this before I have a Logitech remote this thing saves me so much effort because I can replace one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different device remotes up there with this one remote. No, it's not a commercial. I'm just saying it's an awesome remote. Unfortunately, they don't have Linux software so I can program it, and it is all, all web-based, mostly web-based, but the interface to get to all that stuff is Windows. And it's nice because whenever there's an update to the to their drivers for how it interacts with the, the devices and all that, it can update the, that and on the next time you go through, update its own firmware so it always works well. It's been a great device. But any which way, that's just, an, that's just one example of why I still keep the Windows partition and it's there. Another is I'm a big fan of GOG.com, good old games. You know, those have the old games from the 80s, early 90s that I remember playing. really enjoyed King's Quest, uh, Sierra games, for instance. And I've got them all set up and running. So it's mostly just for a gaming thing. And while I could get Scum VM and other things to work in Linux or Wine, sometimes it's just easier to boot into it, just let it run for that. It's good for that, not much else. But it's there. So I've got three or four partitions the exact way it's always been set up. My SDB, my second hard drive, is set up for Gen 2 on my first partition. Normally uh, a, a bin-based distribution, usually Debian, that I have on my second partition so I can test things more quickly if I want to try a program out. And also if it blows up, big deal. I'll just throw in, a, throw in the distribution again, reinstall it within five minutes. And then of course my third partition being uh, the guest OS. Now in this case I put the disk in, everything looked good, the, the install looked clean, it came by and said okay looking at all your partitions, which partition do you want to use? It showed me a graphical interface of SDA with all the partitions there, SDB with all the partitions, and SDC with my USB stuck. I am always warning you guys when installing systems Two things to always watch if you have multiple OS's. Watch for the grub, watch for the partitioning. I told it to, part to, to install on SDB4, which was my third partition because the first partition, of course, swap partition. It said, no problem, we'll take care of it. But we're gonna wipe out, now that was my Tanglu partition from last week. I said, okay, good, go for it. So it sits there and chugs along and does its thing and da 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 and I'm thinking, you know what? It never asked me about Grub. Now there is an advanced install option, and when you turn that on, that's next to useless. Absolutely next to useless. The only thing that an advanced install gave me versus a basic install was it enabled me to check mark a box that forced a more secure password and check mark a box to auto log on. Otherwise, absolutely worthless. After this was all done installing and it said, okay, you're done, you wanna reboot? 
I said no because I like to go into the partition and I normally create some some symbolic links to the kernel and the init RD scripts so that my generic grub configuration in Gen 2 will go ahead and just pick it up and boot to the guest OS. I go in there and I look and say, oh, well, that's interesting. The um, the symbolic links, they already did that. That's that's pretty nice because some distributions will do that. They'll they'll take a long string like VM VM Linux dash three dot ten dot seven dot blah 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 and you know they'll do a symbolic link that says okay that's just VM Linux. Now that's what I do. I do a VM Linux. I do an init RD equals whatever their long string is. So I don't have to type all that stuff in. I can use a generic setting in my grub, and it's good to go. So all right, super. All right, let's reboot. I reboot and it immediately without going to my gen 2 grub setup starts to load into blank on all right well i guess i didn't see anything about grub so not a problem not a problem i can get back into my gen 2 partition and then set all that stuff back up i do that it gets in there i go in there okay okay let's, let's go ahead and mount my gen 2 partition it looks okay, and I, I fix Grub so it boots into that, and I set it all up, and I said, okay, well, that's all I need to do. I should be able to reboot and see my Grub configuration. It should work. I reboot and click on the guest OS to go into blank on, and Tanglu comes up. I go, what the, huh? I don't understand that. That's not right. But Tangalu completely loads proper. To, now, now, wait a minute here. I know Blankon installed itself. And I know, without a shadow of a doubt, I told it the right partition. I start looking around, and, Tang, and, and Blankon blew away. I don't know why. I don't know if this is random or if a bad configuration in their scripts for how they do their partitioning it blew away my first hard drive's third partition instead of my second hard drive's fourth partition i'm a little hot in the collar about that i mean i'm awfully darn glad it didn't destroy uh, the windows partition because then i'd have to you know start over and i've got hundreds of gigs of legitimate games i've bought from gog and GOG and, and all that because you know those things are like 99 cents sometimes if you watch the special I mean, it's, they're, it, the prices are great and I'm looking at this and I'm like what why I still can't figure it out so I threw it in this virtual box here so I could take a look at it and it works fine in the virtual box although it has blown up my system twice now, not just blown up VirtualBox, but blown up to the point where it's frozen and VirtualBox isn't responding. I tried to just go out and back in, close, terminate those types of things, still blew up. Tried to reboot, blew up. I'm a little peeved with blank on Linux. This is version 9. This isn't version 1 dot release candidate 1. You know, this is version 9 of this OS. Now, just to make sure that I wasn't crazy, although I didn't want to do this. You know, it's one of those first time around, shame on, on you. But if you do it twice, shame on me. Well, it's like, well, you know, it, it's already blew up and destroyed the recovery partition inside of my windows. You know, what, more, what more damage could it possibly do? Unless it's a random cr crummy partition thing that... You know, it just happened to grab three, and the next time it grabs maybe SDB2, which is my Gen 2 partition. Oh, I was nervous. I did not want to do it, but I needed to find out that if I was crazy or not. So I threw it back into my test box, tried to reinstall again, went through saying, yep, yep, no, I remember this exactly. This is exactly what it was. Tried it again, and it blew up again. But this time, it didn't install blank on at all it started to install and then it went to where the 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 little progress thing kind of disappeared there's kind of a white screen with the blank on logo on there i let it sit there for about 30 40 minutes nothing nothing at all i rebooted again i gave it a second chance actually a third that would be the third chance it still failed 
miserably. I have never been so upset with a with a, a distribution. Now, as I said, I got it here in the I got it here in VirtualBox, and it is running. And once you have it installed, it does seem to look okay. Yeah, I think another uh, reviewer, um, Jeff Linux Turner, did a review on this last week, and he mentioned he didn't really run into too many problems, other than of course the guest editions are all borked on this thing, and you can't install them. I sort of looked at it, but I didn't bother because I didn't really care about the guest editions. It's not like I'm going to use this distribution for too long anyway. I'm really wanting to trash it. I've done this. This is my 41st or 42nd distro review. And as you know, I'm trying to do 52 distros in 52 weeks. I almost just threw it out the window. I don't like saying bad things about distributions, but this one needs a warning attached to it. They need to fix this problem. I found on the internet when I was doing some more research that there were a couple other reviewers that said if you try to install Blankon with multiple partitions, it gets confused and complains. Now, I didn't get that. It didn't complain. It just blew away the recovery partition of my Windows 7 install and that for that I'm ticked off now had it blown away my actual some other partition that actually had an operating system I cared about I would have been livid this isn't proper this isn't right and like I said this isn't a release candidate this isn't a beta this isn't an alpha this is a full-blown version 9 there is no excuse for this you shouldn't expect that Everybody who's going to install an operating system is going to install it and use the entire hard drive. You know, a lot of us Linux guys out here, we use multiple versions of Linux. We try out different stuff, but we've got partitions specifically set up to put your version of Linux. So any of you developers were looking at this on Blankion, I'm sorry. Look at my other distro reviews. I give everybody the benefit of the doubt, and I normally give them a very good review. But this is one of those that oh I'm just so upset about the way it did this I'm I'm the fact that it not only blew up in virtual box but forced me to have to actually reboot my gen 2 just to get it to back to, to start working again is ridiculous I'm not some Linux noob I've been doing this for well over a decade close to 12 years probably working with different distributions I know my ins and outs around these things and I'm not some guy who's just now starting to try something for the first time now this isn't something I would recommend to anybody until they fix these problems and then I would be awfully darn certain it's fixed before you go trying to install it especially on a machine that has multiple partitions I thought about making a virtual box and creating two virtual hard drives and simulating my my test box just to see what it would do and and how it would respond but I think that there is an issue too with the way it looks at the partitions looking for an available one that it could use and that might be some of the problems too I've tried to wrap my mind around what might have caused this and I really can't think of anything else I mean I'm asking it to look at SDB4 now, SDB4 would be considered HD one comma three if you're looking at that from from that standpoint and of course it installed it into HD zero comma three now I don't understand actually I'm sorry it, it installed it into HD zero comma two so there's no relation between those sort of things it's just and and, and I asked some of the guys that I, I talked to about Linux it's like, okay, am I going nuts here? I'm not going nuts here. I might look nuts, but I'm not going nuts. Oh. I looked at it, and I was like, I might have had a beer, maybe one, while I was working on this install, but that wouldn't have impaired my judgment, and I wouldn't have made this kind of a mistake. SDA3 is a 16-gig recovery partition for Windows 7, my SDB4 is a 
64, 66 gig. It's in the mid 60s partition, dedicated just to the guest OS. You know, whatever I'm working on for the week. When I looked at that, I was like, okay, could I have made them? No, there's no way. You've got SDA one um, or AC, your SDA here. You've got SDA B here, and you've got SDA C over here. There's no way I could have looked at that and said, okay, I've never used it before, but click on SDA3. No, no. There is no way I could have done that. I have warned you guys so many times about paying attention to when you're partitioning because of how dangerous it can be if you have multiple OS's. And that's one thing that when I'm installing an operating system, I might be glazed over like, yeah, yeah, okay, click, click. I've seen this a million times. Boom, boom, boom. But when it comes to the partitioning, I always stop whatever I'm doing. Pause the TV. Stop the wife from talking. Shut the kids up. Whatever it is, pay attention to the partitioning because I don't want to, on purpose, my fault, blow something up. So when something does it, and it wasn't my fault, it makes me angry. So, anywho, I've rambled and ranted for about 16 and a half minutes now. Real quick, in about a 30 second blip here, let's take a quick look at this. Hopefully, oh, come on. There we go. Okay, so when you install, this is GNOME, and <clears throat> it's a little different than most of the GNOMEs I've looked at. I'm not a big fan of GNOME. You may say GNOME. Some people say GNOME. It's spelled G-N-O-M-E. I call it a GNOME. The one of those little silly figures you put out in your yard. <laughs> anyway, it's a little different. It has this style menu over here on the sides. Yeah. I kind of like that a little bit better because I don't pref I don't like that whole menu system that GNOME uses or went to. But then again, I haven't looked at GNOME for a long time. I do know this is kind of based on a customized version of it. They've got everything that you normally would want. A virtual box that I did install in one of my attempts to check to see if guest editions could be uh, salvaged or working. It didn't work. Did come with Pac-Man to play. In here, of course, GIMP, LibreOffice. It came with Chromium web browser and the um, Pigeon Instant Messenger. As I said, LibreOffice here. Sound and video. Um, it did come with Cheese already there, and I tried to install the, the GUVC viewer because <clears throat> I was going to see if I could do it all within the virtual box. Didn't like it. They've got a Sundry, and which is just some settings and things. And of course, your system utilities and regular utilities. Now, it didn't come with Synaptics, and it didn't come with a lot of other uh, tools that I could find to, to work with. So, yeah, I had to use apt-get for a few things to, to get some stuff running. It, it did connect, of course, to my network fine. and uh, But it crashed, like I said, two or three times, even in VirtualBox. And... Even though it did install inside of my Windows recovery partition, I don't know how, but even though it did that, I didn't stay in that long enough to test it in the real environment. All I can say is <clears throat> be very, very careful and cautious when attempting any Linux distribution for the first time and if you have multiple OS's, make sure you've got some sort of security set up. I don't know. I don't know if, uh, when something like this happens, you think, was there any way to avoid this? Was there any way to bypass it? And, and I'm, I'm sorry, there wasn't. Uh, the generic install, which is not the default Debian, this was a customized blank on in, uh, installation GUI that did not look like anything I'd ever seen before and 
<clears throat> no, no, I wouldn't recommend it. I would run from it for right now. You know, number nine, version nine, no. Unless you're going to dedicate a whole machine to it to try it out, that's the only way I'd do it. Because that's the only way I would trust that it doesn't destroy something in your system. And that's all I'm going to say. It is what it is. I'm sorry, guys, this isn't a normal review. It is a first impression. I'll give you that. But so be it. Thanks for watching. If it's morning, evening, noon, or night, whatever you're having, I hope you enjoy it. And look for the next review, hopefully. It will be better. We have 10 more to go to reach 52. And until next time, thanks, guys. Bye.